one of many. Um, so what is collagen? This is the Google definition, um, which is a protein found in skin and other connective tissue, widely used in purified forms. That's about as vague as you can get uh, for cosmetic surgical treatments. You know, so that's Google's definition of collagen. Um, and then they, they went on to say that vitamin C plays a vital role in the formation of collagen, which is true. Vitamin C is definitely important, um, but I don't think it's the be all end all. Like I wouldn't, as we, one of my last slides alludes to synergistic pro uh, products to go along with collagen. Actually, vitamin C isn't one of them, in my opinion. So we'll, we'll get further into that. Um, but what really is collagen? So it's when I Google collagen, and you know, we can all do this, right? You get a million different results, and it's typically cos cosmetic. You know, collagen topical, anti-wrinkle, da-da-da-da-da. Big picture-wise, for me, I'm going to tell you to take collagen internally because, yeah, it depends on... You know, some nanoparticle that some um, dermatological society invented or came up with. I'm going to almost guarantee you if you take it internally, you're going to have a lot better results. It might take you a little longer. It's, with collagen, it's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. It's not like, a, like with talking about arthritis and joint repair. Um, you know, Advil's going to knock out the inflammation and help you feel better within a day or two, right, or within a couple of hours for that matter. But we all know the long-term effects of abiprofen, creating holes in your stomach, kidney disease or kidney issues, kidney failure. Um, so that's really not a long-term solution. Where collagen, yeah, it's, we're, we're trying to rebuild tissue that's hard to be built in the first place. You know, and why is that? We don't have blood flow to our, to our collagen, to our joint tissue. So that's the problem right there is we don't have machinery built into our tissue to, to keep building this up. So it's, we can slowly infiltrate the cartilage in our joints but it, it is it's a slow process. And there's other little things that will go into that too. Um, so in its simplest sense here, or definition, insoluble fibrous protein found in, again, various connective tissues in the body. So there's different types of collagen. There's seven different types found all over the body. The main things I'm thinking of is skin, uh, ligaments, uh, tendons. Um, that's really majority of what our collagen is. Um, it is the most abundant protein in the animal kingdom. So if we think of it that way, with collagen, I want to make sure that I'm absorbing protein, taking in enough protein in my diet in the first place. Um, the other big topic I talk about is antacids, which I'm actually talking about, I believe, in December. So many patients that, that, we, that we know out there are on antacids, and so they don't even absorb they're setting themselves up from failure right out of the gate because, because they're on Nexium or Prevacid, you know, name, name your poison, and they're setting themselves up for not being able to produce collagen because they can't get the amino acids or the building blocks to make the collagen in the first place. No. Um, I just mentioned this, but I should follow my slides. 80 to 90 percent of the collagen uh, consists of types 1, 2, and 3. So that's important. I'll circle back to that. Again, there's seven different types. I'm not going to go through all of them tonight, but the main three um, that we find in our body is types 1, 2, and 3. Um, and why that is important, we'll, we'll, again, we'll circle back to that. Um, mentioned that already. It's also found in um, muscle tissue and blood vessels. So that's an important point, too. So if we look at cardiovascular disease, atherosclerosis, this protein is actually important for those types of conditions as well. Collagen, it's a biological glue. That's really what that is. You know, that's how I, I think of it. Keeps things pulled together. So we've got to have a short course, uh, some biophysiology here on protein. So if you look at all the cells in our body or the majority of them, they have a nucleus where all of our DNA is stored. So with, within that DNA, um, there is, well, I'm not going to get into all of this, but basically there's something called mRNA. mRNA is basically a, a fancy ribbon of coding that tells our body to make a protein or not. And so this, um, this coding ends up building a chain of amino acids called a polypeptide. Those polypeptides link together, and now we've got a protein called collagen. 
Um, so we got to make sure that this whole system's working. The key thing in this whole diagram um, is amino acids. So if we don't have the basic building blocks to start with, our body's ability to produce collagen on its own, um, you know, it's not going to be very good. So we got to make sure that, again, in, in my in my shoes, I'm making sure the patient's not on antacids or not on anything that's inhibiting them from digesting their protein in the first place and getting these building blocks in place to start building collagen. Everything typically upstream is not an issue unless there's some kind of genetic um, issue going on, which isn't typical. There's a few cases out there, but um, for the most part, it's just a matter of the general public, the general patient population is in my opinion, not getting enough of the building blocks to start with. Could you drink, say, smoothies or shakes or whatever with whey protein powder, which has a blend of amino acids and things? Is that a good thing to add to, you know, if you do a daily morning shake for your breakfast or for your mid snack or something? For sure. In order to mm -hmm. add to keeping that in your body? Yeah, and it's, it's the nice thing about like the smoothies and the shakes is it's, I call it pre-digested protein, like the whey protein, mm -hmm. which is, sounds kind of odd, but it's, it's it's, if, it, if I can take in something that takes less energy to break down, it's better for me because I don't have to spend as much energy in, on my digestive process to get that used into my tissues and cells. Yeah. yeah. So this, there's a, this is kind of the same depiction here, but there's just a different way to look at it. But inside the cells, we're building these polypeptides and these proteins called collagen from amino acids. They end up exiting the cell, and these things just keep building on top of themselves, essentially. And there's different formats and different matrices, depending on the tissue that this is made in. Um, and then you get this long fiber that is very, very, very strong. It's actually, if you were to take, um, there was one of the studies that I looked at that compared, uh, I don't know how they did this, actually, but looking at the, the strength of steel versus the strength of collagen, and on a weight basis, Collagen is actually stronger than steel, which I don't know how they figure that out. It's very, very hard to break. We know, all, you know, how hard it is to deform steel. You know, when some these uh, football players they, or when any athlete pops an ACL, you know, any of these ligaments and tendons that just literally tear. Can you imagine the force that they've gone through? It just, yeah. <clears throat> Um, so it kind of begs, you know, I was getting, going through all this research ago, so if our body makes collagen, you know, there's all types of different tissues in our body that make different types of collagen, again, why do I need to supplement? Why do I need to add another thing to, you know, I don't, my intention, you've probably heard me say this already, but it's worth repeating, I don't want patients leaving my store, my pharmacy with a shopping cart full of supplements. I don't want that, it doesn't, I really, it's, it's a lose-lose situation, in my opinion. So I, I want to get this from food sources like the smoothies and so forth. We'll get, we'll talk about that. Um, but we got to make sure that, that, again, that patient is, they're taking those smoothies or those supp or, um, dietary changes to get more protein into their body. I want to make sure they're breaking the protein down proficiently. Now, if you go on, for example, that fasting diet, uh, the fast mimicking. The, the fast mimicking. Yeah, and if you do that, let's say, every few months mm -hmm. or something like that, Again, one of the points of it is to stimulate stem cell regeneration. Mm -hmm. And if that's truly accomplishing that, yep. if you keep on a schedule for a few years or something, mm -hmm. um, would that also stimulate things that the body needs to reproduce, like collagen, even in older age, et cetera? It will, in a more indirect way. A like very slight, yeah. All right. It's, it's a matter of, well, I think one of my next slides talk, talks a little bit about that, but... Yes, in general, if you're getting stem cell production, you're getting new tissue growth. And this is new tissue growth. Yeah. Yep. You still need to be absorbing, well, digesting and absorbing the right amount of protein. So most patients, I recommend 60 grams of protein a day. So if you have to write a number down, make sure you're getting enough protein in your diet and good protein, and we'll talk about what, what I mean by good protein. Um, so we got 
collagen all over our body, um, our, all of our skin is basically collagen. Um, we got a lot of things that are working against us though. So talking about fast mimicking diet and just macronutrient, uh, you know, what, what, are, what should my macronutrient ratio be? The big thing that's going to kill your production of collagen is sugar. And so here's another reason that I advocate the ketogenic diet or something, or at least a low carb diet. So um, this helps my argument anyways. Um, so, so products, um, products of sugar in your body can, can damage collagen cells directly, make them dry, brittle, and weak. Again, if I had to write another number down, I'd write max of 50 grams of carbs per day. Um, that's, that's pretty low. I mean, if you, you grab one of those RX bars that we sell, I just looked at one this morning, it has 22 grams of carbs. So that's not much, and that's one little snack. I could probably eat 10 of those in a day. Uh, net carbs, oh. so not fiber, yeah, fiber, yeah. Good question, yeah. <clears throat> um, smoking decreases the amount, this probably is not a, not a surprise, decreases the amount of nutrients and oxygen to the skin and helps, and then that creates this um, rapid breakdown of, of collagen in the skin. Uh, definitely sunlight, UV rays in sunlight causes collagen to break down at higher rates and damages collagen fibers. Um, and then autoimmune disease, there's not a lot of research on this, uh, there's some, um, but autoimmune disease, specifically lupus, can damage collagen. So that's very, obviously a small subset of patients there that that applies to, but um, some things there we need to be aware of. Um, this is just, I'm going to skip this slide, this is more about epithelial cells and <clears throat> location of different cells and what collagen is being made and so forth. But that's not terribly important tonight. Um, the one thing I'll say about skin, we all kind of can realize this, is that as we age, that, that our skin tissue starts to, to thin just like just about everything else, right, in our bodies. <laughs> Stomach lining thins, so on and so forth. Um, you know, and so we've got to make sure that we're doing the best we can, stacking the cards in our favor, um, actually increasing that protein digestion. Uh, and then helping to increase collagen formation. Uh, so there's a lot of clinical applications of, of taking a collagen supplement. So protects and, and promotes connective tissue biosynthesis. So we'll get more into what that means. Uh, supports the body's own process of self-repair in cartilage, tendons, ligaments, fascia. Supports joint fluidity and cushioning. I'll have a few slides just specifically on that because that's a little bit different than what collagen is. Um, there's also different support um, in, in, the, in the cartilage that we want to be aware of. Um, and then supports normal rejuvenation of hair, skin, and nails. So um, there's other things that go along just besides collagen to improve just the kind of the exterior of our bodies. Um, I'm a huge fan of vitamin D. It plays along role in, in our skin, in the health of our skin. Uh, Omega-3 fatty acids improve that whole process. Anyone that comes in and asks me about, you know, wanting better hair, better skin, better nails, I'm going to ask them about protein digestion. And then I'm also going to uh, recommend biotin. Biotin is a, a B vitamin that helps with the, um, basically the integrity of those three tissues. So now I'm going to get into this very specific um, patients here and, and what we're seeing in the, in the research that's out there. Um, so with osteoarthritis in the knee, this is the, the study I was talking about before, um, there was, um, they were given 10 grams of, of collagen um, hydrolysate, or type 2 collagen, and basically what happened over um, 24, I can't remember which side is which here now, oh, the, the top side, they were, this was the group that was receiving the collagen supplement. The red here, it's a little hard to see, but that was showing new growth of collagen, uh, or cartilage, I should say, in the, in the joint, in the knee. Um, and there was, you can see a very, you know, and this was clinically significant. There was a, a rapid growth of new cartilage in that joint. The problem is that it, it did fade 
after 48 weeks. And actually what ended up happening too though is um, there was in the placebo group, their joint tissue got better. So there wasn't a clinical difference. There was at 24 weeks, but not at 48. So there's more to the picture going on here. That's, that's where I'm like, you know, college is not the fountain of youth. It's not gonna repair everything right away for us and keep it that way. Um, there's more tools in here that I think we have to research and figure out what else needs to be built around collagen. But I wish it was as simple as just taking collagen, but unfortunately with this study, it's not, the, the, the benefit isn't long-term, it's not sustained, so we're missing some piece of the puzzle here. We don't know what it is yet. Um, I just said this, so what, yeah, after 24 weeks, um, again, there was statistically significant changes in the MRI and the scores, but after 48 weeks, the results um, weren't there anymore, essentially. There was still improvement, but again, compared to the, the group that didn't take any collagen, um, there wasn't enough there. So further study definitely needs to be assessed. Um, I think there's other components here to the puzzle that need to be combined with, with just plain collagen. Um, so what is this? So I've added this word. Uh, hydrolysate. Basically, we're, we're talking about the important thing about collagen, again, we t uh, I said earlier, is particle size. It has to be small off and basically broken down to a point that it, that protein can actually get through our GI tract and get absorbed. Um, so the product that, that Ortho has put together, they use, um, this is a trade name called Fortigel. The reason that's important is, again, they're claiming small particles, well, they have studies to prove this actually or to support this. Um, that Fortigel is small enough to get through the GI tract and get absorbed. That's the important part. So you can't, you can't rub this on your skin topically. We have to take it, we have to digest it. Does it go to where it's needed most or is it just floating around the body? And hoping you're hoping it sticks, does, right, yeah, sticks. it does some good somewhere, you know. I mean, like I, if you've got knee problems, is it gonna go help that the most? Or if your skin's aging at the same time, it's like, well. Right, where does it figure out? I think yeah. there's, there's, um, there's one study that we'll, or that we'll get to on Alzheimer's disease that I'll, I'll circle back on that question. I, my suspicion is that it knows, it, there's signaling that's out there in the body telling the collagen where to go to. So, um, if it's connected, you'd almost think it would be more, yeah, it would go to where it's needed. Where it's needed. Just, and just, just kind of just, just random scavengers. So. Yeah, I think it's, it's got a signaling pathway, in my my opinion. Um, this Fortigel is very well studied. There's there was 14 clinical studies done on on this particular type of collagen. Um, it's got uh, specific peptides that are low molecular weight, meaning just small particle size, easily absorbed, and um, it also um, has been found to induce the synthesis of agrican, which is a building block for cartilage. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, other studies have uh, basically established dosing at only five grams per day. The reason that that is important is there are other collagens out there besides Fortigel that the dosing is 10 to 20 grams. The issue with taking in an excessive amount of cartilage that's not small particle size is you run the risk of kidney stones. Because the byproduct of collagen metabolism is oxalates. Darn it. So don't want that. So be careful. That probably doesn't, that probably doesn't say that on the bottle or anywhere. Actually, I know it doesn't. So like if, if you, th you know, I was talking about CBD oil last week, you know, if two squirts is good, then 10 is better. Uh-uh. You know, like, oh, if one scoop is great, I'm gonna take two or three. Don't do it. Less is more. Uh, other applications uh, for Fortigel, so it's mainly used for joint tissue for, for cartilage building, but it can be used, it's helpful for skin. Um, also in, increases dermal matrix or just skin integrity, reduces wrinkles, that kind of thing. So the collagen, again, that orthos, that I'm just picking on them right now because that's the one I have on the, on the shelf. Um, they've added hyaluronic acid. So I used to sell hyaluronic acid years ago, um, probably 15 years ago, and it never really worked. Very, very little results. I only sold one, one type of it. Couldn't really figure out why. When, I, when you read all the research about hyaluronic acid, it's, 
It's a molecule that basically holds on to water and adds the sponginess back to the joint tissue. And it, it just never really worked. The problem is, um, again, particle size and absorption. So the hyaluronic, not all hyaluronic acids made the same, essentially. So the one that's, that's in the, um, the ortho brand is a, a trade name called um, Mobily. And there's all types of studies that support its particle size and its absorption into the tissue, into our bodies. Um, and up to four times, depending on the study that I looked at, there is as little as twice as good as, as the competitor, up to four times, so depending on who they were looking at. Um, <clears throat> this is just one study with using, uh, again, this is, this is hyaluronic acid now, so we're kind of switching gears a little bit here, um, but hyaluronic acid is good for, for joint tissue for sure. So they looked at uh, just pain relief in osteoarthritic uh, patients. Smaller study, they only looked at 20 patients that, that enrolled. Um, they had a placebo control group, so there was just 10 patients in, in each side. S short period of time, only eight weeks. Um, this was looking at 80 milligrams. This is of hyaluronic acid now. Um, but they did show one and a half times greater improvement in pain perception and in muscle ache. So this was sub very subjective. This isn't a very strong study, very small study, but at least was had some positive results. It's trending in the right direction. Um, so in the, the collagen there that ortho has, yeah, you're getting the collagen, but you're also getting uh, hyaluronic acid built right in. So not all collagens have hyaluronic acid. So if you're looking for, you know, trying to s find the right collagen for your condition, um, again, the one that ortho has put together is more for that osteoarthritic patient. Not that you can't use it for skin and, and other function, hair, and all that type of thing, um, but be because the mobile is in it, it's better suited for the, the pain in the joint tissue. Um, the other thing they looked at was muscle strength. So the one thing I didn't know about hyaluronic acid, I just thought it kind of just held on to water and, again, supported the joint tissue more effectively. Um, but they did a study just on uh, muscle strength, and it's all uh, just quality of life improved. Again, this is more subjective, just questionnaires by the, by the participants. This was a short study, 90 days. Did have a placebo group, which was nice, um, but they actually were testing the amount of uh, pressure patients could put um, on a joint, essentially, or on, on their tissue um, without pain, and, and showed an increase of, of muscle strength with patients just after three three months, which is pretty impressive, actually. This is, now we're circling back to the question of where does the collagen go? Where does it need, know to go? Um, so I'm switching back to just collagen. I had to throw that hyaluronic acid in for a minute. Um, so collagen type six, uh, showing one clinical study to protect brain cells against amyloid beta proteins. Why, is, why are we looking at that all of a sudden? Uh, amyloid beta, it's a strong indicator thought to contribute to Alzheimer's disease. So what researchers did is they actually looked at a mouse model uh, of Alzheimer's and revealed that type 6 collagen was being upregulated. The production was being increased in the, in, in the brain tissue. Um, why is that happening? Is it, it's, I, I, it was like, at this point in the game, it was more, um, you know, chicken or the egg. Is the Alzheimer's causing these brain cells, these neurons, to, for whatever reason we don't know yet, to produce this collagen? Or is the collagen there as a protective agent, trying to fight off these amyloid plaques? We didn't know, so we didn't know what was going on. So they kept kind of digging through this. Um, so, you know, building on the increased production, um, the very neurons that Alzheimer's disease was attacking um, was this actual source of the collagen that was being produced. So they actually identified the cells that were being attacked, the, the, neuro, the neural cells, which we didn't even know neural cells can produce collagen, was producing collagen and actually being protective, which was just mind-blowing. This has never been looked at before. Um, and so what they ended up doing is they ended up taking cultures. They, they did cell cultures ex experiments um, and imagine a petri just basically and they had neurons that were 
lack of a better term, um, created to mimic Alzheimer's disease. And then they found that those neurons were producing the collagen to be protective, to basically shield off the amyloid beta protein from, from keeping the Alzheimer's from progressing. And so in this whole process, those neural cells were producing a cytokine, signaling, I think, upregulating the production of collagen. So I think these cytokines are all over in, t in our tissue. Well, they are all over in our tissues. There are certain signaling pathways that are being upregulated, calling for that, that collagen either to be made or if we're ingesting it, directing it down to that tissue. Well, collagen and for the neural protection, but actually protective for, I guess, aging. I mean, like, yeah. if you were to take this, it's best to say start in your 40s so to 60s started. for sure so that from your 60s to your 90s, so. you're going to be feeling as good as you can compared to if you wouldn't have done that you could be in right. maximum trouble you might be inheriting. There's going to be, yeah, you're going to get to a point with Alzheimer's disease that there's so many amyloid plaques built up in your brain, you're going to get to a reaching point that you're not going to be able to go back. At least not with the science we have now so far, the treatments that are out there. Um, <clears throat> collagen in our GI, literally in our GI tract, in the lining. Um, this was interesting to me because I'm a huge fan of fixing leaky gut because it relates to so many other issues that are out there, especially with autoimmune and just in our pharmacy alone has just skyrocketed, unfortunately. So I'm trying to find new modalities for getting leaky gut fixed and repaired. Um, and so with leaky gut or I, uh, IBS, um, irritable bowel syndrome, you get this inflamed permeable membrane all the way from your stomach um, through your small intestine, even in your large intestine. And there's all types of symptoms, bloating, fatigue. Some of these are very nonspecific, obviously, so it's hard to really sometimes even diagnose a patient with, with some of these conditions. Um, and you can go into your doctor's office and complain of you know, fatigue and maybe some diarrhea, constipation, um, five to 10 pounds of weight gain. You're trying to, you're malnourished, so your body's wanting to eat more to gain more nutrients, and um, they might not even be thinking about this. They might misdiagnose that altogether. Um, Something very simple, uh, bone broth in studies have been shown to be of great promise for symptom relief for patients with IBS and leaky gut. So it literally starts going in and rebuilding that matrix back up, which is just, I mean, that's just another tool that I have now of using collagen to repair that, that barrier. Back to osteoporosis. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> with heart disease and collagen, they, this is a smaller study again, just 32 patients. Um, you can see here they were taking 32 grams a day, so I hope they screen these patients for uh, kidney stones. I, I imagine they did. I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't read that in the study, so, um, and it's for six months too, a little bit longer of a study. Um, they measured cholesterol um, before and after and um, glycation end products, cardio, ankle, vascular index. Um, glycation end products, the way I describe glycation in this, in this regard is how sugar-coated um, are your tissues or your, your cells inside of your body. Um, you don't want a sugar-coated sugar um, anything in your body, to be honest with you. The more, and that's what, you know, with glycation, it's kind of like looking at um, uh, a box of Cheerios and now they have the frosted Cheerios, you don't, you don't want that in your body. It just adds more inflammation. So the, the, the more glycation, the worst off in general um, our bodies are. So they looked at that. Um, uh, results, cholesterol did improve, glycation decreased, which was clinically significant. Not to get into st statistics and all the definition, but anything that has a p-value less than 0.05 is considered clinically significant. There's a, enough of a difference between the control group and the treatment group. Um, and then the CAVI, the, the, the vascular index also improved, so the circulation improved in those patients as well. To me, overall, when I looked at this study, I saw I was thinking of just decreasing the inflammation, decreasing the sugar coating in our cardiovascular system, cleaning up the rust, essentially. It's another way to think of it with glycation. Uh, so the authors concluded indication of, of heart disease progression is lessened. Um, again, you, you know, it's 
there's an indication there. It's not that they weren't studying for that. The, the study wasn't weighted to actually prove that. It was really just looking at cholesterol improvement. Um, but again, it's tending towards you know, stacking the cards in your favor um, with collagen supplementation. So am I going to recommend collagen for a patient that um, comes in here with a high cholesterol? No. I've got five other things that are going to be better than this. Um, but if they've got, you know, high cholesterol, they've, they've already had uh, bypass surgery, um, they've got diabetes, um, you know, they've got achy joints already, they're on a PPI or some kind of antacid, so I know they're getting poor protein uh, absorption. Well, then you might have enough there that I might start putting some collagen on board. Poor nails, uh, this was a study that looked at um, you know, poor nail function. So um, I think nails are underutilized as, a, as an indicator for um, health conditions, in my opinion. Um, so if you have ridges in your nails, if you've got little white specks in your nails, um, these little half moon shape, uh, I can't remember what these are called anymore. Does anyone know? But basically, if you don't have enough of those, you should have those little, I'm going to call them half moons whatever. I can make up my own words tonight. But um, You should have a, if you don't have those, you have poor, it's an indicator of poor circulation. Um, so the, the quality of our nails is, is, is really important. It's an indicator of, of our internal health. Um, and so this, this looked at, again, smaller study, 25 volunteers. Um, again, the dosing was a little bit more appropriate in my opinion. Um, increased nail growth, uh, decrease in breaks, uh, overall improvement. A lot of this was, you know, this is just more subjective. Um, patient reporting. Um, patients with poor nails, so if you have the ridges in your nails or if they break a lot, sure you can do collagen. I'd also recommend you get off any antacids. I, I can certainly help with that. Um, the other thing is I'm going to recommend taking something called betaine and pepsin anytime you eat protein to help aid in, in protein digestion and getting more amino acids um, into the nails. Um, and all tissues in your body for that matter. If you've got a, a lot of white little specks in your nails, it's an indicator of zinc deficiency. Um, and that's off the topic of collagen, but you know, start looking at your nails more and, and seeing how they're doing is gonna be an indicator of, of different things. Um, and then the nice thing about this, with this study is they, um, I can't remember, I think it was every two or four weeks they met with the patients and even within four weeks there was improved um, nail function, we'll call it. I just mentioned this. So um, the reason the betaine, and, so betaine and pepsin is nothing more than stomach acid in a capsule. It's all that it is. And it's going to help break down protein um, to get those amino acids um, into the nail bed. So that study didn't recommend it. I, I just added that on, just kind of um, put that in there. Uh, skin elasticity. So mentioned this already, but limit your sun exposure. It's going to break down your collagen the more we stay out in the sun. Um, drinking water, staying hydrated. Um, this was a smaller study um, looking at women 35 to 55 years old. It was double-blinded. Not that that's terribly important in this. There was a placebo group, which is good. Um, dosing was more appropriate, in my opinion. Um, and the issue, so when we're going back, we started on skin. We started talking about skin right off the bat tonight. It's got to be hydrolyzed. It has to be small particle size for that, that type of collagen to get into skin tissue and be effective. Um, so that, that's critically important. Um, and then with older participants in this study, uh, they actually showed greater results. So there's more of that collagen you know, flooding into the skin tissue and rebuilding. Um, up quicker. I think there was just, if I think about it, there's just more holes in the matrix, so to speak, and then the collagen was just able to funnel in there and, and build up the skin quicker for older patients. Uh, for osteoporosis, <coughs> I could probably spend two hours talking about protocols to help with osteoporosis. Um, but again, I wouldn't use collagen as my first line uh, supplement for osteoporosis, I would use um, a product that we have here actually by standard process that is, um, well, strontium is good, but the one that, that, that I'm thinking of, 
It's called Astrofin PMG. It's basically bone meal, and I combine that with vitamin D and vitamin K, and it helps to, it helps to build bone very effectively. Um, but you can certainly add, add collagen into, into the mix for sure. It's certainly not going to hurt. Um, it's really shown to slow down uh, bone, bone breakdown. Um, again, this is, you can kind of see the, the trend here for most of these conditions that, that we're going through. I'd say five grams a day is all you really need for collagen as long as the particle size is small enough. We know we're getting it absorbed. Even, even two and a half would be beneficial. Um, so this particular study looked at five grams a day uh, for 12 months. You know, with bone tissue, we all can kind of think of it. It takes a long time. I had one patient that did the os um, Ostrophin PMG with the um, vitamin D and K. It took her a year, but at age 65, she grew one inch. She was so excited and came in here. It was just ecstatic. Um, she did go to a health club and started, uh, she, um, not that this is terribly important, but she got a trainer. Um, and she did very specific exercises to build bone in her spine and in her hips. So you, you can't just take the supplements and not exercise. You have to do strength training exercise. And once you stimulate that bone tissue, it'll suck up those nutrients and re, you know, rebuild bone. Um, so that's, that's my best success story with, um, with osteoporosis. Um, I was thinking about calling her up or next time I see her to maybe even add some collagen uh, to her to her regimen, um, that's pretty impressive at that age to grow an inch. To, so it was, all, it was all in her spine. I mean, her was she, shrinking she she was shrinking to begin with. Yep. She I'm trying to think how I mean she she told me where she, yeah at one point, but yeah, I think she's she sh was three or four inches in the hole, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. What did you say you recommend? What is the the name of it? Uh, it's called Ostrofin. PMG. It's by standard process. Is that if you've been diagnosed with osteoporosis or is it just a preventative again? Or? Um, I would, well, you'd have to have some type of bone loss to begin with. So you're not, not necessarily osteoporosis, but osteopenic. So I would say like in my definition, any, like a T-score, which is the kind of that, that, that glorified x-ray of bone density, if that's less than negative one, from like negative one to negative 2.5, that's like kind of your osteopenic range, um, definitely would benefit. Yep. Are there any side effects to that? No. Nope. Is bone, bo yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, you just, yeah, you might hit your head, you hit your head going through a doorway. Do these consort through all this? Mm -hmm. Even if you're on D, D and oh, yeah. all these other things? Yep, for sure. Yep. So it, this wasn't a very conclusive study. I mean, evidence is pointing at reducing risk, but this study wasn't geared to, to um, be that strong of a of a study. So they didn't, they didn't evaluate risk; they just evaluated um, uh, bone mineral density. So they didn't, they didn't actually evaluate. You know, what you'd have to do with a study like this is you have to get a lot more patients, and then you'd of that you'd have to find out of the ones that fell after X amount of time and see if they actually broke bone or not. You know, and then you'd have to have two, you know, you'd have to have a sub, you know, a set of patients that actually fell that were on the supplement versus not. And that's how you really get into evaluating, you know, getting more conclusive hard evidence and it's proving not something. Everybody goes for bone density tests beyond, uh, it's definitely before a certain age or if they've, <laughs> yeah. once they've fallen. Well, then yeah, yeah, then they realize, yeah. <coughs> Um, so again, like we, I touched on this already, but do I really need to uh, add another supplement? The, you know, sure you can, but um, wild salmon, cod. I have a whole. This is a short list. It's not all inclusive by any means. Eggs, avocados, uh, leafy greens, kale, spinach. Um, okay, key thing with all of that on that list right there. <clears throat> this isn't collagen. These are building blocks to collagen. So, <clears throat> yeah, we can eat all this, but then I want to make sure that you're absorbing it, having enough stomach acid around to break down the proteins, to actually get it down to the amino acid level, so then the, your body can rebuild it back up. So the supplement's easier. <laughs> the supplement's easier, yeah. <laughs> so you got options. You got options. <clears throat> or I said, yeah, or consume bone broth. And... 
So the supplement, I, I mentioned this, the ortho calls, there's collagen. Um, it's got the Fortigel in it, very well studied. That's the collagen peptide, very easily absorbed, small, uh, small in size. Um, again, this is targeting connective tissue. It's got the hyaluronic acid built into it. Um, it results in, again, four times more activity with um, building up synovial fluid in the joint tissue. I just, again, I think of hyaluronic acid, again, as just sucking onto all kinds of water in the body um, and adding that sponginess to the joint tissue. So if anyone's going to take hyaluronic acid, you've got to make sure they're well hydrated, make sure they're not on a, well, if they're on a diuretic for blood pressure, we've got to, we got to, you know, finally balance that. But I want to make sure that that you know, patient is well hydrated. Uh, and then it's got a third product. I didn't talk about this yet, but there's something called Tendo Active, which is a type one collagen, um, specifically for tendon ligament repair, um, which is important. So, so specific to the. Ortho product, the dosing is one scoop a day, which is five grams, so we're not putting ourselves at risk for kidney stones. Got to be careful of that. Um, if, if you do have a history of kidney stones, um, you, you still want to talk to your doctor about taking the, even the five grams, because they might want to put you on potassium citrate or some other supplement to help get those oxalates out of your system. If you have digestive issues where things go through you too fast, would you be in more at rest too? For yeah, that? yeah, that'd be tricky. Yeah, because we want to, yeah, because then it's, is it a matter of, do we have enough transit time? Because if it's going through too fast, we might not have enough opportunity for our body to absorb it. Yeah. Well, and the other one that could put you at higher risk for kidneys, so. Yeah. Um, so this, so this particular product, it is unique. It's um, to date, it's the only formulation that combines. Again, I didn't talk about all seven types of collagen tonight, but the, the main types, you know, 80 percent of what's in our body is types one, two, and three. This product combines those three types of collagen, which is pretty unique. Um, and it's got that hyaluronic acid as a, as an add-on, as a sidekick. I alluded to some of these already. So if we're going after joint tissue, um, we want to add fish oils, omega-3 fatty acids. We know they reduce inflammation in the body. They're great building blocks. Um, they're great for brain tissue. They're great for joint tissue and reducing inflammation. If we're looking again, if we're talking about um, hips and you know, knees, that type of thing, I'm going to always recommend glucosamine and chondroitin. There's a whole other talk just on that particular supplement. In general, though, a lot of the stuff, unfortunately, comes from areas of the world, specifically China, that I would not recommend you consume. Glucosamine and chondroitin that we get from ortho comes from Europe. Why is that important? Um, it actually go, it goes back to the size of the particles of glucosamine and chondroitin. Theirs is broken down enzymatically versus chemically, and so with an enzymatic cutting of chondroitin, you get a very precise cut in a smaller piece size, which then to the patient, there's clinical effectiveness because you're actually absorbing it again. If you break it down chemically, who knows where it's really, it's kind of just randomly breaking down the chondroitin and you can get all different size pieces. So yeah, you might get some benefit. Um, that's where you start seeing that patient variance. Oh, I took glucosamine chondroitin and it didn't work. So. Um, but then the other patient, it did. So it depends on the quality of the product for sure. How, how, what's, the, what's the molecular size of, of those two ingredients? Yeah, because over the last five to ten years, for the most part, was kind of considered by those that bothered to care a mm -hmm. waste of your money. You yep. think you're taking it like you're going to repair all this stuff. Right, right. And then I thought, well, has something changed since then? But so it's, it's, the, the, it's, it's the source. The product. Yeah, yeah. The, and even with a small particle size, I always tell patients, if you're going to do glucosamine and chondroitin to make sure we're, first off, we're getting the right molecular size. If we check that box, then we've got to make sure that the patient's committed to at least three months of a trial. If you're only going to want buy one month of glucosamine and chondroitin, I'm going to tell you to not even get it. 
it takes a long time to get that cartilage rebuilt back in the knee or the work, you know, whatever elbow or hip joint that we're trying to focus on. Um, so we got to make sure we're we have a therapeutic dose and we're doing it for the right amount of time. So um, we talked about turmeric forte earlier, about and it is it's it, turmeric forte or turmeric or cumin. Um, it's on the well. It's in, it's in my um, one of my medical references in the in the lab. It talks about how it, side effect is heartburn, acid reflux. Um, I've actually experienced it myself. Other patients have told me about it as well too. Turmeric is very hard to absorb. Just yeah, yeah. It's it, it's tough. Um, this is a brand name by Standard Process that I like. I've used a couple of my um, pharmacist staff pharmacist <laughs> as guinea pigs. And she and her husband tried all the different uh, curcumins that we have in the store. Um, this is the one that won out by far. What about that? There's a product, I forget who it's by. Curcumin 95? Yeah, uh, Terry Naturally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that it, I, I used to carry that. I had a few patients get it through our store. Didn't have, I mean, I, well, I shouldn't say it. I, I, don't, I don't know how well it compares to this. Supposedly now that it's been combined with whatever, it's supposedly can be, because um, I know Dr. Be Winter was here one time, better. he says, don't waste your money taking that, just yeah. it's better to take a spoonful of, yeah, yeah. you know, but yeah, turmeric. on the other hand, they said the absorption was increased by when they figured out what it was that you needed to combine it with, so. Yeah, they, and there, is, there was another company um, that had that same claim, and they've got a study to show it's um, 26 times better absorbed. Um, and I had my pharmacist take that one, and it worked somewhat, but then she took the turmeric forte, and it, it was night and day difference. I was taking the Terry naturally, you know, So turmeric's always tricky. So I always tell patients, too, if you've taken one that doesn't, and it didn't work, it, it doesn't mean that another one's not going to either. Yeah. What are you looking for? So the, the, the tech, it's for pain, inflammation. Yeah, or pain related to inflammation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, I don't know all the science behind it, but basically, turmeric is very water insoluble. And they've figured out a way to solubilize it so it's better absorbed. And once it gets absorbed and into our system, then the uh, anti inflammatory benefit can kick on. Mm -hmm. But it's the, the, the tricky part is getting it into our system in the first place. There's doctors that have called us to ask us to make this as an IV. <laughs> but we. So oh, you're saying that the, you know, for like the Terry Naturally brand or even this sort of is still somewhat subjective based mm -hmm. on patient report of yeah. the clinical feeling better or something versus mm -hmm. whether it is being absorbed, it can't really be proven. Right. And it would be different in every body depending on your weight and your metabolism. And yeah, your yeah. What's the integrity of your GI tract? Yeah. Still better to eat it. <laughs> still probably, yeah. So, okay. so it's, I mean, this isn't one of my first choices, but it's it's out there. It, it's. It's one of the tools. Maybe it's not, you know, mm -hmm. not first in line, but it's there. Talked about betaine and HCL again. So again, if any patient that comes in and they, and I, I always ask them, well, how, do you eat steak? No. Why not? I'm, I feel like it sits in my stomach for the next three days. They don't have enough stomach acid typically. Then I, then I look at their nails. <laughs> and if they have ridges and like all these hills and valleys, that's another indicator to me that they don't have enough stomach acid. So, <clears throat> yep. So then I get them that right away. <clears throat> or if they're low in iron, I get them betaine and HCL. If they're low in B12, I get them uh, betaine and HCL. You need stomach acid to absorb your iron, your calcium, all your minerals. Uh, and so, I blood, what can you do to get rid of iron? yeah, iron's tricky. So like, you don't want to get too much iron. You, know, you've got to be I'm careful with that. Sure right now, but mm -hmm. I have a because it's too low at this Three point? Three out of five times, they can't even get anything out of me. And I'm uh, like, okay, yeah, i got to lower the number. And it's like, okay. Uh, Back when I had kids, I needed iron for a yeah. year. And now, and now you got, now it's the other way. Much. I mean, it's not dangerous or anything right now, but it's still a number that Dr. Whitcomb wants to bring mm -hmm. down. And it's, it bugs me not knowing, other than avoiding spinach or something, what else I can do. Yeah, you know, I, wonder, but I, I wonder why, yeah, why is that high? <coughs> Going all the way back to my IBS and leaky gut syndrome slide, um, 
my trifecta for that particular patient would be adding glutashield and SBI. So glutashield is glutamine. It's, it's um, not gluten, which sound, often gets confused, but the amino acid glutamine helps to repair the leaky gut um, in, in the IBS. Um, and then it also has, uh, or the, the other thing I recommend is something called SBI. SBI or immunal PRP, it's basically an immune globulin that changes the interface of our immune system and what the immune system allows into our circulatory system and what stays out is the kind of the simplified way to explain what these two products are. Um, they basically modulate the immune system to um, reprogram it and tells our body what comes in through our GI tract and what stays out. I think that's, how long did I, oh, I yammered for an hour, not too bad. I thought I was going to be 45 minutes, so I did, maybe I went a little too long. Um, I know, is there any questions? <laughs> Like if you 